everybody. This is Gail Anderson and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. What y'all doing today? It's Wednesday. Hope you're having an awesome day. It's a beautiful day here in Tulsa, nice and sunny. And today is a great day because I get my grandbaby. Hi Taryn, hi Crystal. Laundry day, all right. <laughs> did mine yesterday. Today I get my grandbaby, two years old. I cannot wait. We are going to make cookies. We're going to play with this clean type of sand that I got at the Brookstone store. We're going to do bubbles, of course, cheap fun, and uh, take her swimming at the community pool, which we love. And the big thrill of the afternoon for my two-year-old granddaughter will be picking Papa's tomatoes. <laughs> she loves the garden, and one of the things she does every time she comes over is says, Papa's tomatoes, Papa's tomatoes. So we have to walk over, water the garden, look at how the tomatoes are growing, and it's just so much fun. Oh my gosh. So moms, believe me, when you get to the point that you're a grandmother, oh, you love this stuff. <laughs> you're not doing it 24 seven. So all of a sudden it becomes your time to experiment and use the things that you use with your kids or use new things that you found out, but it's just so much fun. I love it. So I get her till tomorrow night then. So she gets to sleep overnight here. And she is so acclimated here and so perfect. I just love it. Yes, it is a treasure. And of course, she has a little brother coming along probably the beginning of December or maybe more toward Thanksgiving. And that helps me get through the other four being gone in California. But okay, what kind of trips you take in this summer? We are gonna talk about some other stuff, but are you going anywhere fun this summer? We've got a couple of trips planned. Um, we'll be going to Colorado this weekend to see my husband's family. That will be fun, and we go to Branson as a whole family. All the kids will be there, and we'll be vacationing the end of August. We do that every year, so that's fun. So where are you guys going? Somewhere sunny, somewhere cooler than where you're at, somewhere where there's lots of fun stuff to do. Colorado, the end of next month. Awesome. How are you guys doing? I haven't seen you for a while, Hollins. Um, Prince Edward Island. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Bransom in Florida. Crystal, you like that too? Man, we've been going there 30 years. <laughs> okay, well, it's good to see all of you. Um, if you watched yesterday, we were talking about training your children's behavior through rewards. And I am all about rewards. <gasps> you have another one on the way. Oh my gosh, Jennifer has twins. And do you have another one as well? Your twins must be what, 14 months or something? Oh my gosh. And Health Nutty, you're planning a staycation. That can be so much fun. Excellent. One-year-old twins, oh my gosh. Crystal, you do it as a family with your parents and brother and wife. Okay, cool, his wife. <laughs> Thanks Siri for the autocorrect, that was great. So um, yesterday we talked about why to motivate kids with rewards because at the beginning they are not motivated intrinsically. They do not get motivated just because it's the right thing to do or because it feels good or because it makes mom and dad happy. So you use rewards to build that outside, that extrinsic motivation so that they'll do those things until they get internally motivated. And if we're talking about toddlers and preschoolers, this is major. This is how they learn. You have to be able to make it a positive experience for them. Uh, we want to keep motivating them and training them with rewards until it becomes a habit. Now, you don't want to do that forever in a day. You just want to start out rewarding them. You have a points chart, Crystal. Excellent. There are so many different ways, and we talked about a lot of them yesterday, um, using charts with stickers, stars, using pennies, um, other coins, you know, according to how old um, the kids are and what it means to them. If you're thinking about a two-year-old or a preschooler, one coin seems to be about as good as the next and a dollar bill just doesn't cut it. They want coins that they can feel that are hard in their hands rather than dollar bills. But they'll catch on quickly, very, very quickly. Um, I also m talked about coordinating with your kids and figuring out what their ways of giving and receiving love are. And I recommended the book, The Five Love Languages for Children. Now, I will put the link, uh, the folder with all these resources in today's um, 
description on YouTube as well as yesterday's. And there's lots of other resources I have in there, contracts for teenagers and uh, sample jobs your kids can be doing around the house, but also the links to that book. There's, um, let's see, five love languages for adults, five love languages for teenagers, and it's very helpful to understand. I mean, I used to think that giving them gifts was the way to do it. Well, no, each of them is different and receives love in a different way. So. In case you're interested, those five ways are words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, physical touch, and acts of service. Hi, Saliji. Nice to see you today. The funniest thing about those gifts, uh, most of my kids are different. Only one has the gift, um, the gifting love language. But for me, when I was a mom at home with my five kids, my major love language was acts of service anything that my husband could do to pitch in with what was going on was telling me and showing me that he loved me. So I think that changes when you're not in such a pinch with all the things that need to be done at home. But I really want to just specify a couple of things from yesterday that we didn't hit. Make sure that the things that you have as goals for the kids are reasonable. You shouldn't be expecting a two-year-old to be able to clean a whole bathroom and make sure that the rewards are reasonable too. You know, you don't want to give somebody $10 for sweeping out the garage. You know, it all depends on their age and what money means to them. Thanks for those hearts, you guys. If you like what we're talking about, make sure that you tap on the screen and give me some hearts. So make sure that they're reasonable, reasonable expectations, reasonable rewards, because you may be carrying this on for a little while, so you don't want to overdo it. I got one of the greatest suggestions from one of our watchers, Taryn, and she was talking about her toddler needing to give an immediate reward, and she gives a little chocolate chip. Not a whole candy bar, not a whole cookie, but a little chocolate chip as a reward. And if that is motivating her toddler, excellent. Man, I'm going to do that with my two-year-old grandchild. I love it because it's immediate, it's quick, you're not having to keep track. You know, as they get a little bit older, kindergarten and school age, you're going to have charts and have to administrate the systems. <laughs> yes, we do that if my husband doesn't get to them first. Very good. It's just one of those things that if you can do it, quick and give them something quickly and you don't have to track everything it's really nice to be able to do that marshmallows excellent that's in the holland house um one of the things that oh man i was just going to say something here quick reward da, 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 da. oh yeah one of our quick rewards of course is pennies one two three in a jar or a, a nickel or a dime for the kids when they fight for the bottom um, if you have heard me talk about this, this is a, a phrase that we got early on where we talked about putting others first, fighting for the bottom, letting them have the first place, letting them choose the largest cookie, or taking the smallest cookie even if you take the first one. So we wanted to reinforce that cooperation in our kids. I do it a lot with my grandkids, probably even more than I did with my own, and that's where we have the jars out. What age do you think that works best for you can start talking about these things with your toddlers. Absolutely. Start talking about fighting for the bottom. Let's let him go first and kind of play it out. Show them how to let somebody go first. If I'm going to let Johnny go first, then do I grab this toy or do I let him take it first? And of course, they don't have words to explain all that, but you do. You can start explanations even before they have full understanding. So just keep going over it and have the same lingo. My four-year-old would get it, but my 20-month-old always thinks she's first, naturally. And probably during the two-year-old stage, it's going to be that way for a while. But you can still talk about it, Taryn. You can still mention, let's let so-and-so go first. Um, my two-year-old grandchild, Nellie, um, was very, very self-centered and just upset when she didn't get something, screaming in that. But there is hope because mom has changed her just by training to just talk about what she wants. And she's just not screaming like she was. I mean, she has totally mellowed out. She hit the two-year-old stage for 
four or five months and now she's just really settled down and every child is different but have the hope that if you keep doing these things and keep having the explanations and trying to get her to settle down she will change she will progress if you like what we're talking about today make sure you swipe and share with your friends what I wanted to do today the biggest thing is I want to be able to just give you a blast of ideas for rewards so creative rewards for your kids so last night I just sat down and wrote idea after idea I think most of the things that we talked about yesterday were why we should do it why it's good how it operates situations where we might you know train behavior and give rewards but I just wrote up a whole list of ideas and you guys had some great ones and they're on here too so if you have some other ideas that I don't uh, mention please put them on there um, before I do that I do want to just mention here that when you're giving those physical rewards to your children make sure that you are also giving them verbal praise start associating those two things together and then later on it'll get to where just praising is good enough that just pleasing mommy and hearing mommy say good job is wonderful and this is kind of a different thing it's probably a new concept for some of you but I found that it was best for me to divide between the child and the behavior the child is good the behavior might not be so if you're disciplining they get disciplined for the behavior the child is not bad but what he did needs to be corrected same thing with rewards the child is good anyway but what they did was good compliment and reward the behavior and I like also to generalize it to the future when I see a child organizing his desk I say wow you are a great organizer when you work for a company they are gonna love it that you can go in and organize the workroom or if you're getting along with people and you're in a play group and you're trying to get two people to get along you can say can you believe how great it is to be a mediator like that to be able to bring peace in that situation man someday your family's gonna love it that you can bring peace to the family and get people to get along so it's on the job it's in the family it's just their future you start speaking into their future so that they can hear that thank you I'm glad you enjoy that so here is my brainstorm here on rewards and I'm just going to read I hope you guys don't mind um, again Taryn the chocolate chip as the immediate reward for a toddler absolutely excellent and I would suggest that as well for potty training probably better than the M&Ms I was suggesting okay what about a high five and everybody shouting and dancing I mean we would always have the after potty dance everybody gets up and cheers the whole family is involved and I love that oh we gotta make a note here folks okay um, time with mom and it would be their choice as far as how to spend that time you'll be surprised at what a big deal it is and again if you don't think they're old enough to quite understand even a preschooler knows if this means I get to sit down with mommy and play with my toys that's fun a trip to the park time with their friends how about some useful items like a new toothbrush a special toothbrush a new hair bow for a little girl or even a special kind of cereal you know in our house one of my economical ways of getting by the whole cereal issue besides fixing oatmeal and other things for breakfast was to make my own granola so that was the only choice for a lot of years I had a lot of hungry kids and I did not have enough money to be buying those expensive cereals so we had granola so in our house to go out and pick out a box of his favorite cereal that either he ate all himself or he shared with others would be amazing that would have been in our house take them to a special event woo how about Disney on ice or something like that or Sesame Street or even if you do have a theme park that you could go to for just a day trip you know I love doing coordinating things where if you have three or four kids they can all work toward getting the points necessary to be able to go to a theme park for a day during the summer now you might be doing that anyway moms but if you make it a reward 
no sweat off your back and now you're training them and getting them to do some things that you've been wanting them to do and doing the same thing that you would have done already. You were going to take them to the theme park. The other thing I like about that when they're coordinating, this is when they're more like, you know, preschool and elementary age and they can work together, is that one child will work with another to get them to get their points. Is 10 too late to start? Absolutely not. 10 years old, no, that is fantastic. Gee whiz, I mean, I did not put our driving contract in the resources for yesterday, but I, I think I'm gonna go back and do that today. Our driving contract with the kids was, one of the items on there was if they drove for six months and did not get any kind of a ticket, then they were able to spend $75 from their savings account, which, you know, we had percentages that they had to follow. And so a certain amount of money had to go into savings. And depending on how much they needed for just spending, a lot of it went into savings. And they were not allowed to spend it. So they were allowed. So at 16 years old, they got their driver's license. And for the first year, they had two opportunities to get $75 each time, each six month period, and spend that any way they wanted. And I will never forget this with my son, Jared. He had planned on getting a new pair of tennis shoes with that $75. And he was driving once and somebody behind him was anxious and didn't want to sit there behind him. You could tell was all frustrated. And he's just sitting there going the speed limit saying, buddy, it's you or my new tennis shoes. And I love that. That was his motivation to make sure that he was following the rules. And we felt like for the first year of the time they had their driver's license, that was essential to start off those good habits. So you can have rewards at any age. My goodness. I suppose by the time they're over 18, you're not doing that very much. But when they're still in the house, yeah, you can have those rewards. It's excellent. And any time... I did write a blog on this, so you should probably go to our website, uh, kirbyanderson.com, and check. But I talked about making changes in the family a positive experience. So there are some hints in there for how to make those changes, even though you haven't been doing it all along. And I'll tell you, I did not do all the things I talk about the whole way of parenting. It's things that I picked up all along the way. Now, a lot of them I wish I would have been doing the whole way, but you learn and you just start things. And sometimes the older ones are saying, hey, how come they get rewarded for this? And I didn't. Well, that's something I just got the knowledge on that just became, you know, really important to me and it's just the way it was. So. Okay, take them to a special event. Read a book to them. This can be just a great time for physical touch and just special time together. Um, staying up late. Ooh, that was a big privilege in our house. We had certain bedtimes, so staying up late was a big deal. Any other privileges that you want to give that they usually don't get at that age or on that day or whatever. A pizza night. How about an art activity together? Now for me, I'm a horrible artist, so sitting down and drawing pictures is labor for me. I hate it, ask my grandkids, but it is very important to them because they are very artistic and they draw much better than their grandma does. Uh, let's see, camping out in the living room or the backyard just with that one child as his reward. Now make sure that you're giving him enough things to do in working toward that reward that you're not doing this every three nights because you have such simple things for him to accomplish. Play a board game or a digital game. And this again, this was a big deal for my kids, like sitting down and playing Nintendo. Oh, I hated that. But it was a big deal to them. So whatever is a big deal to your child, use those things for rewards and consider what's appropriate that, for them to do to earn the rewards. Uh, let's see, trip to the dollar store. This is so fun. Anything in there is a dollar. So you can go in and say, okay, when you get your whole chart finished, we're gonna go to the dollar store and you get to pick five things. Very fun. Uh, play, let's see, oh, time on technology. Kids can earn time on technology for them to just go play on their own. That's a big deal these days, especially if you have limits. 
Um, if you do go to the dollar store, it's great to pick up a whole bunch of things and have them in a treasure chest. That way the kids can choose something and it's a little bit more immediate. That's great for preschool age. How about being off their chores for a day? That would be kind of cool, either mom or the other kids cover because of something they've earned. How about being kid for a day? It's their day, everybody else does things for them or takes extra time to say nice things to them, compliment them, take their dishes to the sink after dinner, things like that. We actually had a special day for each of our kids. We had five days. So we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It was Josh, Jared, Jesse, Rachel, and Rebecca. They each had a day. Now it wasn't always a special, special day like that, but they could answer the phone. They could ride in the uh, front seat with mom. Those were big deals back then. Can't do it now. Of course, we don't even have regular landline phones, but that was their day. They got to do some special things. Uh, choosing a new cereal, we already talked about that. Choosing a special dinner. If you get 10 out of your 15 stars this week, Friday night you get to choose what everybody has for dinner, what mom makes for dinner. How about fixing them breakfast in bed? That's another idea that I found helpful. Getting to have a friend over. You know, it gets crazy if you have five kids and they all want to be inviting friends off and on during the week or whatever. So make that a privilege, especially if you have a busy household. Sometimes we did things like that with another family or we did a few friends at a time and we did it on Fridays um, because that was our lighter day for school. We worked ahead those four days so Friday could be a little bit uh, more lax. And my husband would talk about how he would come home on a Friday afternoon and there'd be like 12 kids at our house. <laughs> but it was easier for me just to have friends all together, just have a big play day, everybody have big activities planned, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, tea and crumpets, that was something I did with the girls. Tea could be any kind of juice or even Sprite, and the crumpets would be anything, water, or crackers, cookies, biscuits, anything. Uh, and the other thing I have here is watch a special show. I think that's my last one, but Whatever you do, plan, take your kids' personalities and what floats their boat into consideration as you're putting their rewards, making sure that when they're younger, you're giving them those quick rewards. They can go a little bit longer as they get older, and of course, as teenagers, even longer. But it's just fun things. I love how you celebrate everything we do. You should hear about our birthdays. <laughs> a lot of this, well, I shouldn't say a lot of it. Some of it came from my husband. And um, for me, I just wanted things to be so special and memorable in our family. Um, it wasn't always like that growing up, so I wanted to make some real changes. And part of it is just my focus on kids. Um, I majored in child development. I was a teacher. I mean, it was always my focus. So it's a lot of fun. So hopefully those ideas will help you. I'm sorry I've kept you on here so long, but it's great to connect with all of you today. Have a great Wednesday. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate that. And email me again if there's anything I can help you with. If you have some more ideas for my scopes, I'm just keeping them all. Okay, I'll do a birthday scope. <laughs> Great. So thanks all of you. Have an awesome day and I appreciate you. You are very special and you are moms that are going to absolutely thrive in motherhood. Okay. Thanks.